In this video, I'm going to go over some very basic date functions in JavaScript. We have a very simple form. We have code that automatically puts today's date in a format that we're familiar with. We're getting a familiar format from the user. I'm not doing any error checking here. We'll get to that in a further chapter. Then when we hit the Get Age button, it's going to tell us how old we are. Let's look at the JavaScript. I'd like to talk about scope here. Scope is when variables are visible. Anything written outside of functions, generally at the top of the program, is considered to be global variables, which means I can see these variables in any function that I have. And I have two functions in here. I have the set the date function. I'm actually just setting a value here this line sets a value month, month, day, day, year, year, so that birthday is showing that it should be month, month, day, day, year, year. This will give us a problem if we just try and run it like this, because I'm not a number and not a number months old. That's fine. So the set the date function, we're taking, we've gotten variable date equals new date. Whenever you, we're using the keyword new, we're working with an existing object, the date object, and we're creating an instance of it which we have called date with a lowercase d. So every time I'm using date, it's getting today's date, and I'm getting day set to date got dit get date, month date got get dot get month. I'm adding plus one to this because when it gets the month, it counts the months 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're used to seeing February as 2, but it would represent it as 1 if we didn't do this. Then we have the year, get full year. I set a global variable of age month and age year. I did not want to get into calculating days old because it gets a little complicated when you figure out how many days are each, in each month in leap years. I didn't want to get into that level. So I have a very simple function called set the date, and it's setting today, that's this box right here, equal to month plus a slash and spaces plus day, uh, no spaces, just a slash plus day plus slashes plus year. So that as soon as we launch the pro, as soon as we launch the page, the onload load function will call the set the date function, putting this in our screen so that we know today is February 5th, 2013. So I'm going to enter in my real birthday. And I'm going to calculate my age. And it tells me that I'm 41 years, 9 months old. I considered putting in a series of if statements to insult me about being older than dirt, but I didn't really want to take the time. So if I were to calculate this, for a different date. Let's pick something younger and pick something that is in a month lower than this. And we'll just say it's 91. It can calculate that it's 22 years old. One of the big things is that since we haven't hit May yet, we need to have an if statement in here. We have to check to see if the birth month is greater than the actual month. And then if it is, it's the year minus the birth year minus 1. Hence I show up as 41, not 42. And the age is equal to 12 minus the birth month plus the months. So it would be 12 minus 5 for calculating 1 in May plus 2. That gives us the real number of months. If we are after the month, since it's February and I checked a date in January, then it ignores that and it's a very simple calculation. So this shows you how to use the date function and we can set a birthday as a new date, we can do different things with the birthday value, we actually get birthday equals birthday dot value probably didn't even really need this because we don't use it as a date. It didn't hurt anything. It did establish that it was a variable named birthday, but I could have just created it as a string with the same effect. We did declare it as a date. It does meet that format, so it's okay. To bring in 
the month from here. I'm using my variable birth month equals parse int birthday dot substring and what I put in is my starting value which is the zero spot and have it count two two which would be actually go zero one two it doesn't include the last one this is not the number of spaces it's the last value in the string so it takes me zero and one and it ignores the last value so it's zero through two not including the last one so when we get the birthday dot substring for my year what I want to do is zero one two three four five six this is the first value that we're going to pull and it there's actually nine numbers here we have to go to ten otherwise it will lop the one off because it does not include the last one that you're counting so I'm actually using a substring to pull out just the portion that I want and then again I do my comparison and put my values in there so if you want to go see the actual code which is always helpful when you're trying to recreate something it's mary.mccdgm.net slash cis147 slash chapter 7 slash date and time dot html <laughs>